Excellence in our industry comes from quality teams creating quality products. In an industry that's constantly evolving, it's your unwavering grit, determination, and passion that drives innovation and elevates standards to new heights. As brewers ourselves, we know what that passion looks like. It's the drive to create something exceptional, fueled by dedication and love for the craft. As a stainless steel equipment manufacturer for over 10 years, ABS Commercial provides a full consultative approach to our customers, from consultation and design to installation and ongoing care and maintenance. Whether you're in planning, just getting started, or looking to expand, we're here to support your growth and your success. Thank you for choosing ABS Commercial as your trusted partner. Hello, everyone. I'm Andrew Copeland with Craft Beer Professionals. And I'm Michael Varda with Craft Beer Advisory Services. We are excited to share with you the results of our 2024 industry-wide employee satisfaction report. We're going to begin shortly, but in the meantime, we'd love to know who you are, what brewery you're with, and most importantly, what you're currently drinking. I hope you've enjoyed day one of our spring virtual conference. And once again, huge thanks to ABS Commercial, Beer Law Center, and Whipfly for your support and helping keep content like this 100% free and accessible to all. We appreciate you and everyone for believing in building a better beer industry together. This marks our third yearly report. When we first began collecting data from the inaugural study in 2022, the industry was still facing challenges brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic. Many were looking for more purpose in life, both personally and professionally. More conversations were taking place on mental health and work-life balance. No longer were brewing industry employees just happy to be working at a brewery, but were becoming more vocal about their desire for increased compensation and benefits. In 2023, an increasing number of brewery employees, primarily in the front of house and business roles, were not happy with their compensation. We also saw training still a pain point across the industry, with even more females believing they were not properly trained for their roles. We created this survey to hear from you, those on the front lines of tap rooms and the brew houses and all important roles that contribute to our industry success. We wanted to learn about your experiences to create a snapshot of where employee satisfaction trends are at the time of this study and to use these findings to learn where we can go next. Now, as our industry continues to mature, we are excited to share with you a new set of data. We hope the findings can both provide insight and value to both brewery employees and owners alike. Well, thank you very much, Andrew, for that. And it's been a pleasure working on this with you for three years now. Uh, crazy to believe that. So a little bit of background on the survey itself and the adaptations that it's taken through the years. First developed in winter of 2021, the survey largely stays the same year over year uh, with a couple minor shifts that we'll talk about throughout the presentation this year. But we do that and we keep it the same so we can track change over time. We can look if there are any meaningful shifts by uh, demographic, by different segment, by role type. So this particular year, the survey was launched and fielded in Q1 of 2024, starting in January. And then we actually rounded it up, uh, finished fielding in mid-March of, of this year. It was distributed to a national audience of craft beer professionals through the group itself, through emails, et cetera. And the analysis was completed in March of 2024, as we are now in full virtual spring conference season. For the demographics and the audience this year, it was a, another very strong showing. We had a total of 295 responses from 243 breweries ranging across 46 different states. In terms of full-time and part-time, we had 82% full-time respondents, 18% part-time. This year skewed a little bit more heavily male than female and according uh, from previous years, 67% male, 33% female. 90% not identifying as part of the LGBTQI plus community. And then you have the role breakdown there as well. Uh, front of house, brewing ops, business roles and owners. We will get to specifics on a further slide of exactly which role uh, funneled into one of those particular categories. And with that, Andrew, I'm going to toss it back to you to get to some of the fun stuff. 
Thanks, Michael. It truly is hard to believe this is our third year of doing this together. I appreciate you and, you know, diving through this fun set of data. So today we're going to break down our presentation into four sections, tenure and compensation, sense of belonging, training and performance, and overall happiness. Let's dive into tenure and compensation. In this first section, we will look at the amount of time our respondents have been at their current brewery, how long they've held their current roles, dive into benefits packages, compensation, and sentiment behind the aforementioned areas. Let's take a look at how long study participants reported being at their brewery and how long they have been at their current role. This year, we had less brewers respond who reported being at their brewery for less than a year, a decrease of 25% since 2023. We also see a higher percentage of brewers who have been at their current role for over seven years. One explanation for this is that fewer jobs may be available, making it more difficult for brewers to break it into the industry and or find a job at a new brewery. Thus, those staying in the industry are staying put at their current brewery and in that role. Following this trend, we observe slight increases in the overall number of employees who have been at breweries one to six years, reinforcing that these employees are retaining their positions at their current brewery and thus resulting in new, less hires. We see a 25% drop in front of house employees that have been at their brewery one to three years. However, this is likely because they are choosing to stick around, resulting in a 55% increase in reporting of those being employed at the brewery for over four years. As we will see shortly, reporting shows that monetary compensation for front of house workers is also increasing. The taproom experience is the epicenter of their brand for many breweries, and those continuing to work here have emerged from pandemic challenges. They have experienced the adaptation of more technology, evolution of service models, implementation of food programs, and the continued importance of the taproom as an event space. Front of house workers have played a vital role in building meaningful relationships with guests, educating them on the value of breweries, and giving them reasons to return. These numbers on length of employment will be interesting to follow in years to come, especially with the open close rate of breweries across the country flat. Now, we're going to look at how respondents describe their compensation package. I encourage you to come back and look at the slide. It has a lot of really fascinating information. They were able to select all options that apply. I'm excited to see a 16 percentage increase in those reporting compensation as wages and salary compared to 2023. We also see paid time off as a benefit increase 16% since 2022, with over 6 out of 10 receiving paid time off. Health insurance increased 19% over the same period. Nearly half of those employed full-time received health insurance at their brewery. Brewers are actually the most likely to have health insurance as a benefit. In a role, that can be quite strenuous. Insurance is a very desirable benefit. Compared to 2022, we see a 25% increase in those receiving equipment stipends, which may cover things like boots, protective gear, or other items designed to make a position safer and more efficient. 2022 saw a decline in those reporting a performance bonus, and we are pleased to report a 26% increase this year. More performance bonuses can perhaps infer that breweries are creating more formalized job descriptions and better laying out expectations. I'm excited to see employees rewarded for hitting important key metrics and striving to reach these marks. Providing employees with desired long-term benefits will not only increase their happiness levels, but also help with retention at not only your brewery, but within our industry as a whole. One aspect I'm not excited to see is that respondents compared to 2023 saw an 80% drop in mental health stipend as part of their compensation package. These are important, there are important conversations being had about mental well-being, and with the challenges being faced in the industry, there is still, this is still an area that breweries can improve the quality of experience for not only staff, but also owners. While it's a simple statement, happy employees perform stronger in their roles, and as our industry continues to involve, evolve, it will be important to offer robust compensation packages to help with retention. Now, let's look at compensation ratings. These figures include both full-time and employees and owners. I want to first break down the role groups. Front of house represents those in taproom and in events. Brewing operations includes brewing, production, packaging, canning, and quality assurance. B business roles represent sales, marketing, accounting, finance, HR, distribution, and legal. Owners include owners and partners. When you look specifically at full-time, 18% more reported compensation above 40,000 compared to 2023. We saw the number of front of house employees making above 60,000 increase by 43%. Those in brewing operations roles increased compensation 16% in the same range. We do see a decrease in those business roles. 
In 2023, 39% of those business in business roles reported making over 60,000. This decreased to 27 to 27 percent in 2024. In past years, those in business roles were the most likely to report making over 80,000 per year, and they can still claim this title at 10 percent reporting compensation over 80,000, barely beating out those in front of house roles by less than a point. As we've seen in the past years, the majority of those in brewer, brewing operations are making between 40 and 60,000 a year, with numbers remaining flat since 2023. For what it's worth, the number of owners reporting their income in 2024 versus 2023 increased 31%, with 45% reported $40,000 to $80,000 per year. On this slide, we're going to see how respondents rate their overall compensation. It includes both full and part-time owners and employees. Despite more front-of-house employees making over $60,000, we see a 16% increase in the number of front-of-house employees that perceive their compensation as below pay, pay, fair pay. This trend continues with decreases in those reporting their overall compensation as fair and above fair pay. Perhaps those in front of house roles saw substantial increases in pay following the pandemic, and while they may be receiving more compensation than before, the rate of increases may have lowered. Historically, front of house employees had seen the highest rated levels of fair and above fair pay compensation, and while they still wear this crown, they lead by less with 47% of business roles reporting fair or above fair pay versus 58% of those in front of house. This was 52% versus 70% in 2022. As I would expect, with the decrease shown on the prior slide for business role compensation, we see a 60% decrease in those who report above fair pay. It's worth noting that nearly four out of 10 in business roles in 2022 reported above fair pay. This is now only 6% an 83% drop over three years in report. I would also hypothesize that following the pandemic, these roles were given wage increases as we saw the importance of running a strong business grow and that the rate of wage increases hasn't kept up with their expectations and perhaps inflation. Despite seeing the gap between brewing ops compensation and other roles tighten, we see an increase of 15% of those in brewing roles that believe their compensation is below fair pay, going from 41% in 2023 to 47% in 2024. This is nearly one out of two brewing ops employees rating their compensation as below fair pay. As mentioned on the last slide, we did have more owners report than before, and we see a 71% increase in owners who believe they receive fair pay. This is an interesting call out, as despite all the hardships our industry has experienced, owners have a more positive perceptions about their overall compensation. Big picture, 43% of participants rate their compensation as below fair pay, a 10% increase from 2023. Michael is now going to dive into sense of belonging. Well, thank you so much for that, Andrew. And just kind of recapping that, the idea of inflation, the idea of rising costs of goods, rising costs of living, uh, certainly a big part of a lot of those feelings and perceptions. And the reason I sort of interlude with that is with sense of belonging, there's so much that goes into generating that sense of belonging overall. And a lot of the times it's things like compensation, it's things like benefits that contribute to that. So with that, we're going to go ahead and look at those and as well as some other things as well. First up, we have safety and authenticity. The way that this question was framed, you're actually looking at a, a graph of three separate questions. The three questions were, I feel safe around owners, I feel safe around managers, I feel safe around coworkers. And the line graph there, you see the orange, uh, that represents men, the black line represents women, the red line represents LGBT community, and the blue line represents non-LGBT community. <clears throat> excuse me, and feelings of safety are strongest around coworkers and lower among managerial relationships. So on the right hand side of your screen, you see the coworkers that is sort of the apex, the top of there, uh, the, the, the curve, and then lower feelings of safety and authenticity around managers, and then some, somewhere in the middle for most groups across owners. When we think about that, and we think about what does it mean to uh, feel safe and be able to be authentic around your owners, around your managers, et cetera? It might make sense that you would feel the most comfortable with your coworkers because there's not a sense of hierarchy. There's not a sense of um, you know, reporting structure. So the question then becomes, how do we increase that number uh, for managers? And we try and you know, 
get that as high as we possibly can, making sure that you're having open and honest conversations regularly, not just necessarily a you know quarterly performance check-in, making sure that you're having awesome conversations all the time about things that are going well, about things that could be going better. And those are the types of things that are likely going to move the needle and get that manager feeling safe, feeling authentic around managers, get those numbers up year over year. So up next, we have the same uh, question in terms of safety and authenticity category. I can be myself at the brewery. And this is one where we see a little bit more fluctuation year over year. So a little brief moment of change. Now the graph is representing from left to right, 2022 on the left, 2023 in the middle, and 2024 on the right-hand side. And for the rest of the visualizations in this presentation, uh, the overwhelming majority will be following this exact structure so you can better understand and track change over time. Psychological safety remains high across all groups with nearly 9 and 10 overall reporting being able to be themselves. And that's awesome. That should be celebrated. Uh, really, really wonderful to see that people feel like they can be themselves uh, almost regardless of the different segment that they're in. And uh, as craft beer continues to try and be a place for everybody, uh, these numbers are particularly encouraging and uh, a sign of, of good progress and good things to, to continue to come. In terms of management, this question was phrased, I can approach my manager about an issue without the fear of retaliation or unfair treatment. And this is a little bit less of a warm and fuzzy visualization as we break down some of the, the segments. <coughs> Women and LGBT respondents indicate uh, less feelings of safety in terms of being able to work and approach their manager about an issue without fear, retaliation, or unfair treatment. So in other words, they are more concerned about fear. They're more concerned about any sort of retaliation when they approach their manager with an issue. So kind of looping back to two slides ago, that idea of having those regular conversations, particularly for folks who uh, may feel a little bit more um, uncomfortable bringing up situations, bringing up conversations and uh, talking about these issues, making sure that you're having the regular conversations, uh, making sure that when you do approach management, you know you're going to be supported. You know that you're going to uh, be in a safe space and your place of employment should be a safe space. You should be able to you know, come and talk and bring issues about. Um, so men uh, feeling a little bit more comfortable, women a little bit less comfortable here, uh, opportunity for improvement as we uh, continue on. Innovation. So the way that this question was posed is I can propose new ideas and they will be valued by my colleagues. Overall, uh, relatively steady year over year, a uh, slight decrease there for the LGBT community, but overall respondents remain relatively standard year over year and idea creation and value addition. And this is awesome to see when you think about everybody that is taking the survey, front of house events, tap room, brewing operations, business folks, the fact that there is this level standard of being able to propose new ideas and being valued by colleagues, that's a sign and a big signal of mutual respect. It's a sign that all of the things that we enjoy about the industry, all the ideas, all the different events, all the different beers, that there is space for that. And this number, seeing it relatively steady year over year, is a wonderful indicator of that uh, element where all ideas are welcome and we're going to work collaboratively to bring it to life. The final slide here in terms of performance motivation. There are disparate motivation levels uh, sort of year over year. This is one where there was a little bit more variation across groups. Uh, however, they mostly converged to a sort of lower middle there in year 2024 on the right hand side, as you can see. Um, 
But what I want to take away here is the drop in women uh, feeling motivated to to do their best. And this is a little bit of a trend now, as we've seen, there is a uh, you know, lack of feelings of, of safety when approaching managers about an issue, um, lower trust uh, with managers. And then this idea here that there's a little bit lower uh, motivation to be performing your best from 2023 to 2024 for women. So understanding that motivation and your team, you are a whole team. It's not one person. It's not two people. It's everybody on that team, making sure that everybody feels included. Everybody feels motivated to be performing, to give their best. And overall, I will say, you know, that it's 10% of all respondents report a lack of motivation to perform. So you might look at that and think, oh, like 90% of people feel motivated to you know, do their best generally. Um, yes, but I think that if we're happy at 90%, uh, that that's really leaving out that 10%. It's leaving out why is someone not feeling motivated to do their best? So taking it from a very holistic perspective, understanding that it is about the entire team. And if you're working all together in unison, Andrew, you and I talk about this all the time in terms of experience. If everybody is doing their job and everybody is rowing the boat, that ship is going to be sailing a lot more smoothly. Yeah, it's so simple to say, Michael, but when your team's happier, the whole business is going to run better. And now that brings us into training and performance, which is one of my favorite things to talk about. And we're going to look at how well those surveyed were given the tools to succeed in their roles and the opportunity to excel. So let's dive in. It's fascinating to now have three years of data to look at on this one. First, we look at how participants responded to the statement, I was properly trained for my role. The graph is broken down by gender and LGBT status. There is a significant difference between those who identify as LGBT and those who do not. Non-LGBT respondents have seen a 37% increase since 2022 in those that agree or strongly agree that they were properly trained for their role. Those who identify as LGBT have seen a 44% decrease since 2022 in their agreement to the statement. Those non-LGBT in 2024 are 90% more likely to believe they are properly trained for their jobs. I want to repeat this statistic. Those non-LGBT are 90% more likely to believe they were trained for their jobs than those who identify as LGBT. We still have work to do in making sure all team members are receiving the necessary skills for success. This goes back to what Michael said on the last slide about the 10%. If 10% don't feel motivated, what can we do better? The same can be said for training. A gender gap also still exists in participants' responses. Men are 21% more likely in 2024 to respond that they were properly trained for their role. On a positive, nearly 20% more women compared to last year believe they were properly trained, but once again, we still have work to do to give everyone equal training. It cannot be assumed that an employee knows what to do, whether in the front of house or back of house or in between. It is vital that breweries have organized training to provide their team with the tools for success. Next, we're going to look at how participants responded to the statement, I have someone at my brewery to ask questions about my role. While non-LGBT respondents on the last slide saw an increase in being trained properly, this graph shows that numbers remain flat on non-LGBT respondents agreeing or strongly agreeing that they have someone to ask questions about their brewery. There is once again a decline in LGBT respondents on this statement. Barely three out of 10 LGBT respondents have someone at their brewery to ask questions. This is a drop of nearly 40% since just last year. Diving into roles, nearly one out of two front of house employees strongly agree that they have someone to ask questions. 63% agree or strongly agree. Looking at the brewery ops counterparts, only 15% strongly agree and barely over 40% agree or strongly agree. Mentorship is important, and in future studies, I hope to see all roles receive higher marks here. Big picture is that almost half of respondents still don't have someone to ask questions about their role. It starts with proper training, and then those at the brewery having someone to assist with development. 
As we'll see shortly, respondents consider growth opportunities a top three contributor to future happiness. In this slide, we look at how they agree to the statement, I have meaningful professional development opportunities to continue growing with the brewery. Simply looking at this graph since 2022 immediately paints a picture. It has been a sharp decline in the total number of respondents that agree with the statement. No group saw an increase with those identifying as LGBT seeing the largest drop at 13%. To reiterate, barely 50% of participants agreed they have meaningful professional development opportunities to continue growing with the brewery. Nearly 7 out of 10 in business roles report opportunities in 2024 for 6 out of 10 in front of house and 5 out of 10 in brewing operations. Professional development is a key motivator to future employee happiness. Lack of professional development opportunities may create a frustrating experience for a brewery employees that contribute to team members relocating to other breweries or leaving the industry. This will be an important statistic to watch in years to come, and I hope we see owners and managers invest better across the board in their teams and in the opportunities given to them. Despite not believing they have much opportunities for development, participants for the most part believe they are provided the necessary resources to perform their job well. However, those identifying as LGBT saw a decrease of 68% on this statement since 2022. In 2024, those in business roles are 22% more likely to agree or strongly agree with this statement than those in brewing roles. Participants in front of house roles are the most likely at nearly 8 out of 10 who believe their brewery provides the necessary resources to perform their job well. Looking at gender, we see men and women report near identical results at 65% in agreement with the statement. Once again, I hope to see improvements in those and how those who identify as LGBT respond to this in future years. All brewery employees should receive the necessary resources for success, as it will only help our industry grow together. And now to really bring it all together, the final section of our presentation of overall happiness. There are a lot of the things that Andrew just touched on in this prior section of training and performance that are contributors to overall happiness as he was talking about professional development slash growth opportunities and really looking forward to diving into some of these slides. First up, we have respect. The way that this question was phrased is, what is your level of agreement with the phrase, there's mutual respect between my coworkers and me? And this is something that has stayed uh, with the exception of the little blue dip there for the non-LGBT crowd something that's remained relatively standard at a very, very high level year over year. So this generally going to be another very positive, very hopeful slide. Good to see that the non-LGBT crowd with that increasing back up to more normal levels in 2024. The craft beer industry is a place of mutual respect. It doesn't necessarily matter what your role is. It doesn't necessarily matter which brewery you work for. There's this sense of camaraderie and friendship and uh, industry allyship that's really, really special. And this is a wonderful statistic to highlight that. Transferring to something that is a little bit less warm and fuzzy, overall levels of happiness from 2023 to 2024 dropped. The way that this question was phrased is I am happy to work at my brewery, percentage selecting agree or strongly agree represented in the graph. And this was a uh, decline there as we see particularly among women. Uh, and then really overall, uh, there's just this general drop. And we think about this and why might this be? We're going to get into specific factors a little bit later, but I think that we've already covered a lot of these keys. A lot of the ideas contributing to happiness, compensation, feelings of you know, being paid below fair pay, the potential lack of growth opportunities. So if you're a brewery listening to this, thinking about what can I do to increase you know, my employee happiness, employee retention, et cetera, thinking about those different opportunities that you can get just to show them that you're invested in them as an employee. They're investing time in you. You're investing time and resources into them, making sure that they have opportunities perhaps for certifications, for conferences, for all sorts of different events that are going to ultimately bring them um, as a more engaged employee uh, on the on the day to day. 
here we are looking still at that same question of I'm happy to work at my brewery, but instead we are looking at it by role. And we do see that uh, in the orange there, front of house has a, a sharper decline there. Uh, business roles being pretty standard, brewing ops being standard, but lower. Um, so understanding that the folks that are typically the happiest to be working at the brewery, owners, which is generally a good thing. We would hope that that would be uh, near the top of the list, if not the top, uh, front of house and business folks. But then understanding that brewing ops folks are the people who are a little bit less. They're driving some of those general decreases overall when we're looking at men, women, uh, LGBT, non-LGBT segments. Uh, but then when we look at it by role, particularly front of house, uh, driving some of that decline year over year. And the additional piece here, touching on owners, owner happiness did decrease 10 percentage points from 2022 to 2024. We think about what that might be. It's a very tough year in the industry. It's not necessarily uh, you know, the idea of this crazy boom, crazy growth, all good times. Like the first quarter of 2024 has been plagued with a lot of headlines that are are really difficult. It's a difficult time to navigate uh, you know, these these murky, challenging waters. Uh, but overall, looking at it, I'm happy to work at my brewery by role. We still see nearly eight and 10 across all roles reporting that they are, they agree or strongly agree. <clears throat> Up next, we have perceptions of ownership. So respondents demonstrate a slight decrease in their perception of breweries ownership. The way that this was phrased is I have a positive perception of breweries ownership, selecting your level of agreement with that. So seeing the across men, women, and non-LGBT folks, the slight decrease from 23 to 24, overall, it's not uh, the largest of decreases, uh, but then we do see in the LGBT crowd with that increase from 2023 to 2024. Um, generally thinking about this, if you're an owner seeing this and wondering why might this have decreased, uh, thinking about just different ways to engage the employees to make sure that their voices are feeling heard in the tap room and uh, the brewery in general, making sure that you're engaging those folks, making sure that they feel valued. Those are going to be the keys to changing and shifting these positive perceptions, hopefully for when we're back here in 2025 to see a slight increase across this slide. Up next, we have management perceptions and a similar decrease here year over year, a little steadier than the owner perceptions, but respondents demonstrate uh, general steadiness in their perception of direct managers and supervisors. So making sure, understanding that that relationship with the manager, uh, if you are an employee, a bartender, whoever you report to, that is going to be absolutely critical to the happiness. That was the piece earlier in the presentation when we looked at sense of belonging. That was the, the managers, direct managers, supervisors. That was the piece that was lowest in terms of, I feel safe and comfortable around this person at my brewery. So the manager relationships being another key uh, from this year's presentation to bring forward, invest time, invest energy into those relationships as we try and find things that are correlating with that overall happiness decrease management perceptions and general feelings around direct managers. Those are two very, very key elements. Brewery reputation. This, I think generally, Andrew and I would probably both agree, uh, good to see it steady. Employees generally see their breweries as positive community builders, steady percentages surface year over year, not too much shift year over year, um, one of the more positive slides from our presentation this year, thinking about breweries are those beacons of the community. They are gathering places. And the fact that the staff is generally bought in at a very, very high level, uh, all good things to see here. Up next with employee retention. Employees show slightly less intent to remain with their brewery in 2024 than 2023. I'll mind you that these percentages, these drops are 
uh, particularly low, ex with the exception for the LGBT community that dropped from 79% in 2023 to 70% in 2024. But when we think about different ways that employees are going to be happy, and uh, this is sort of a, a spoiler for our final two slides of content, but when we're thinking about what actually matters, what's going to keep people here, it is no longer the year of the pizza party. And that's not to diminish the value of the employee appreciation events or closing a night or you know, giving everybody a two or three day uh, vacation. It's not to diminish the value of those events. However, employee retention has become much more about dollars and cents, much more about how you are supporting employees beyond the nine to five. And I use nine to five as a, a very blanket term just to represent a work shift, understanding that people are dedicating so many hours uh, you know, per week, but making sure that once they leave that brewery, that they also feel supported to be able to take care of themselves, their loved ones, their families, et cetera. So looking at this grid here of current happiness, the question is what are the factors currently contributing to your happiness? This is, uh, remained the, the same options from 22, 23 to 2024. The green numbers represent a year over year increase. The red numbers represent a year over year decrease. So I'm gonna start on the left-hand side in 2022, fourth place, base wages and salary, 46%. 2023 dropping a little bit uh, to 43% and then coming up in importance, base wages and salary, 46%. So when we think about what the respondents are actually saying here, they're happy with base wages and salary. That decreased in 2023 ever so slightly, and then it increased and became the third most important factor contributing to current happiness. When we look at the top two across 22, 23, and 24, Coworkers, welcoming environment. People are doing this because they love the industry. They love their breweries. They love the people that they're working with. That has remained constant. We do see things like taproom discounts. Uh, taproom discounts overtook collaborative environment in 2024 and benefits being at 33%. This is more of an indicator that the benefits may not be something that is contributing to their current happiness. The benefits might not be robust enough for them to be thinking, wow, like that really makes me happy if only one in three are citing benefits as a current source of happiness. Something to keep in mind as we segue into our final slide of content, future happiness. For future happiness, financial incentives reach the top of the list really across year over year. And one of the things that Andrew mentioned as a top three indicator of future happiness, top three future contributor, that idea of growth opportunities, that idea of professional development, that idea that they can continue to work at their brewery and be very happy and secure doing so. We look at base pay raise and from 23 to 2024, that increased uh, seven percentage points. Namely, four out of five respondents are saying a base pay raise would contribute to their future happiness. Three out of five saying growth opportunities and one out of two increased benefits. We see performance incentives that also rounding out the top four. And when we think about those top four in 2024, right hand side of your screen, base pay raise, growth opportunities, increased benefits, performance incentives. Those are all very tangible things that in order to keep and maintain the high level of talent that you have in your tap room, it's recognizing these people and uh, what is a challenging time really for everyone. Costs are up for everyone. It costs more to make your beer, costs more to market your beer, costs more to sell your beer, costs more to operate. Uh, and then when employees are going home, costs more to feed themselves, feed loved ones, feed families. Everyone is feeling it. And as much as you possibly can, showing those um, appreciation, showing appreciation in the form of compensation or investment in their future, investment in their career, that is what's going to ultimately make 
the largest difference. And just like we talk so much with regards to the taproom of building relationships with your guests for owners and managers and looking at your teams, it's so important to understand their needs and their expectations so that you can not only meet them, but you can exceed them, resulting in greater happiness, greater retention, and an overall more successful brewery and industry. Michael and I greatly appreciate you taking the time to tune in today, and we appreciate your passion for crafting the best experience for those in our industry. We encourage you to download the report at the link below, and please email us your questions, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. That's our contact information right there. And once again, we really appreciate everyone who participated this year, everyone who tuned in, and everyone for being here, for being dedicated to the best and most successful craft beer industry possible. Thank you very much, Andrew. This is always a pleasure to put out this work together. Really look forward to keeping it going year after 